Hello, my name is Nick, the EMF guy Pino, and this is the Smart Attack Podcast Special Edition. I'm presenting a, the very cool event called the 7th Annual Biohacking Conference, also known as the Bulletproof Conference from Dave Asprey. And I'm in my hotel room here at the Hyatt, not to bash on them, but every hotel gets it wrong when it comes to EMFs. It's just how it is. So I'm going to show you guys the room, what I'm doing the moment I'm entering a hotel room to ensure that I minimize the EMFs in that room. What am I talking about? So if you're not familiar with my work, I'm talking about electromagnetic pollution, electromagnetic fields. So everything from Bluetooth, Wi-Fi, uh, you got a cell phone, cell towers, all of this emits a type of radiation called wireless radiation. We could call it technically speaking, radio frequency radiation. And at the moment, it's looking like it's gonna be classified as a class one carcinogen within a few years time. And I have a good podcast episode on the science. It's a 10 minute video. So if you wanna watch that, I highly encourage you to do so. But let's get started. I'm gonna show you the practical side here, not the theory, how to use an EMF meter and certain tools to make your hotel room lower in EMFs, enjoy better sleep and better health. So for a quick overview, we're looking at the supplement stash. I will not talk about my supplements, it's just too overwhelming for an episode. That's my computer setup. I'll tell you about it a little bit later. And today we're going to be using two main tools. We're going to be using uh, the Green Wave meter and associated filters and this will reduce a type of EMF radiation called dirty electricity and that's very specific that's different from the wireless stuff I'll tell you about it in uh, phase two of this video first phase is going to be using a very simple EMF meter such as this bad boy the ESI 24 which is the one meter I recommend with Brian Hoyer my co-teacher on the electro pollution fix course so first you take that meter in hand you have a nine volt battery in the back you press the big button it's pretty intuitive and then it will open this thing looks at three different kinds of waves at the same time you see there's hf wave the one at the bottom is the wireless radiation there's electric fields and magnetic fields so wireless electric and magnetic fields and if you're listening to the audio version of that it's going to be a little bit more difficult to understand but understand that this type of meter i'm referring to i'm going to put everything in the show notes of course but it has three distinct types of electromagnetic pollution that it's able to look at a lot of people ask me where do I get started if I want to remove EMFs or if I want to reduce my exposure? The answer is very simple. It's the treaty system. That's a system, that's a framework, if you will, that I've developed with Brian Hoyer, who's an EMF mitigation specialist, because it can be overwhelming or it can feel overwhelming at first when you look at EMFs and you realize, my God, we're exposed 24 seven. There's the towers, smart meters, Bluetooth watches. There's there's a thousand different sources here in the city. I'm in Orlando, Florida. There's a lot of devices, a lot of people using a lot of things. So where do you get started for it to really matter and without losing your mind? So the treaty system is this. First, it's downtime. Think about the bedroom or when you're trying to relax. Second is duration. Where do you spend most of your time? right so it could be your office could be your bedroom it could be the sofa if you spend a lot of time on the sofa these days but just the room where you spend the most time is a top priority because again cumulative overall exposure matters more more than spot exposure here and there maybe as you have a, a 30 second phone call to do shouldn't worry about that phone call as much as spending 10 hours in front of a computer connected via wi-fi for example so think about that, think about duration. Number three is distance. So if you have devices that directly touch your body, 
then you might think about those as troublesome, especially because of the long-term cancer risks associated with those, right? So we don't want to mess around with that. And then the most powerful effects might come from the devices that are right next to your body, especially at night, right? So downtime is important. And if you have devices right next to your bed, then we need to take care of them. So let's start with that hotel bedroom and see what's wrong with it. That's a very standard setup. There's a bed, there's the bed stand table, number one, number two. Uh-oh, what do we got here? Well, every hotel out there has a marvelous alarm clock that looks super techy. The problem with those is that most of the time they are Bluetooth enabled. What do I mean by this? Well, it means that technically speaking, I could connect this bad boy to my phone, but this bad boy normally would be emitting 24 seven. It looks for a signal, so it's sending. You don't see it, but we're gonna soon hear it, or it, it might be the case. So it's just, it, it's a suspect at the moment. If I turn it around, I don't know if you can see it very clearly. It's, it's, there's Bluetooth pairing there. So right there, when you see Bluetooth as a keyword, it confirms that there's the possibility of connecting to Bluetooth. So let me open that again and just let's listen to the sound together. When I go very close, I'm going to be exposed to electric fields and magnetic fields as well. So if I have my head too close, there's a lot of electric fields that will be problematic from that exposure. If I step away, it's not that much of a problem. But still, if it would be too, too close to my head, I would get exposed to a lot of electric fields because the electricity, just close this for a second, it's annoying. The electricity goes out, doesn't stay in the machine. The electricity goes out six to eight feet from the wall. Unless the wall in these industrial buildings has metal conduit for the uh, electrical wiring. In most homes, this is not the case. And this is not shielded. So this will emit a large field of electricity. If your head is here, you have a problem. It will increase how much electricity is running on your body. So right there, I have a problem with this. As far as wireless goes, if I just reset that machine or, or try to listen to it, I am not detecting that there's a strong wireless sound. What I can do on the ESI24, that's pretty neat, I can go to another mode here, the more precise mode. And this, I know this sound is annoying guys, sorry about that, but it's part of your training. <laughs> so now I'm in uh, RF or HF wave mode, but more precisely. So now the three rows of LEDs will show exposure to wireless. If I go very close to that machine, I don't see much of a difference. And the sound you hear, it, it kind of sounds like a very screechy sound, very high pitch. These are towers. So I'm not going to be able to do much against these at the moment. However, just to be on the safe side, what I'm going to do with this guy is just unplug it altogether for tonight. So that's your remediation for, for this guy, just use your phone instead on the airplane mode as an alarm clock and ditch the normal alarm clock and that lamp. So if you use that lamp before bed, just make sure to completely turn it off uh, or completely unplug it before you doze off. We have a problem. So that phone is a DECT phone or I think it is. It's it's a phone that, right, I could take that and I could go away with it and normally it emits, nowadays these guys emit in the same range as a Wi-Fi router. So in other words, look, my pillow is there, right, I sleep right here, I have my blue blockers, these are the blue blocks I use during the day mostly and these are the raw optics I use at night and I can put links somewhere in, in, in the show notes. So anyway, I use these and I have a router two to three feet from my head. This is not good. This is not good. Not good, guys. So um, you see that it's plugged. I It's going to be hard to see, but it, it's plugged right here 
through an Ethernet port. So what we're seeing is that the, most of these phones or a lot of the models like these draw their power through Ethernet. Um, so what it means is uh, there's no, you won't see any other plug. So you gotta unplug it from the wall if you wanna disable them. But let's look at the sound that these make when they emit these EMFs. So just reopening the ESI24 again. Hmm. So it's pegging the meter. Now let me go, uh, I'm, what I'm doing at the moment is putting the ESI24 near to that DECT phone by the bed stand and it's pegging the meter at maximum. So that's not good. If I go away a little bit, you see that it reduces. So distance is a problem. The moment I start being at one foot, then it starts being maximum and then I'm in the red zone when I'm right next to it. So let's look at the more precise uh, reading here. Oh, this is what it sounds like when you're close to a phone. This is a DECT phone uh, sound, classic. So now I'm stepping away. And now I'm seeing only the first row. I'm in that precise mode. So it means that all the three rows of LEDs represent wireless radiation. One row is bad enough because of the towers. But if I go closer to that phone, see? What happens is that it goes up and up and up and up and up until it's overwhelming. So if I'm by the bed, it's not as bad, but you do hear that that bizarre sound it makes so it means that right there on my pillow I'm already exposed and the meter gives a rough indication of exposure guys so what it means is that there's no reason on earth why this phone should be turned on during the night because the more sources you get rid of the better off you will be even if the power levels on the meter do not drop you're removing different frequencies that are there. And the main problem with EMS is the chaos that is created when you have all these different frequencies on top of each other. So don't think you're not doing something good by unplugging just one source, you're doing great. So I'm gonna go ahead and unplug this and then we're gonna move to the office environment. So here's the classic office setup in a hotel. Right then and there, I see a problem. I see another DECT phone that if it's on, normally these models, if it's on, it will be problematic. So it's just a single uh, ha uh, handset. And let's see if in the precise mode, it doesn't emit anything at the moment that I can detect. It's just the towers that you're hearing. However, just to not take chances, I will go ahead and unplug that. But there's another problem that uh, is I don't know if we're gonna be able to detect it uh, because I did unplug it. I think I did unplug it already. So I don't know what I did wrong, but uh, that thing right here, unless you, you don't see it. Oops, that's a hidden router. Let's see underneath. Let's see underneath, guys. I'm And there it is. So that's a router about a foot from where I would have worked and it seems to be powered by Ethernet once again. So what do you wanna do is unplug it, especially at night. And I told myself I will not work right next to it because there's no Ethernet port that I can use where I could use a wired connection and turn up the Wi-Fi because I don't have access to that router. Or maybe if I were a hacker, I could read, uh, completely cancel out the Wi-Fi option inside, but I'm not able to do that at the moment. So unfortunately, I decided to work somewhere else. However, I did realize that unplugging it led to no reduction to my ability to connect to the Wi-Fi at this hotel. So in reality, um, I don't know what purpose it serves, but uh, it used to be pegging the meter, now it's not, and I think I might have screwed something up. So sorry, we're gonna call the IT department for future uh, guests. So really sorry about that. Still, 
regardless of what you do about that router so you can unplug it and just verify if you keep a connection because I think I'm connecting to uh, a Wi-Fi router that's probably industrial strength that's in the corridor over there so it means that I still have a decent connection working on a computer with Wi-Fi simply is not ideal because you're you're what a foot your face is a foot two feet from Wi-Fi so it means that it's gonna lead to high exposures right so let me sit on my computer and uh, let's just see I want to see to don't want to show my password but I'm gonna enter it and show you guys what I do instead of using Wi-Fi on my computer of course at home I do use uh, I do use an Ethernet cable but here on my computer I use something else so what I do normally you have the Wi-Fi let me just try to show it on the screen my Wi-Fi is turned off right if I turn it on Wi-Fi turn on how do I do that here that's on Windows 10 my new uh, computer I like it but you're gonna hear what a computer connected on Wi-Fi sounds like. Let me see this magnetic. Still turned off. Why is it turned off? Hold on. There you go there you go okay so a lot of clicking now my computer is looking for a Wi-Fi network so that's what you're exposed to right next to your face it's pegging the meter basically if you're listening to the audio version so what's happening is I open the Wi-Fi I don't want to open Wi-Fi I want to turn off the Wi-Fi like this turned off okay however how do I connect my computer to the internet considering that I don't have any Ethernet cable right if I turn off this router I'm in a bit of a trouble there's no Ethernet port either so how do I connect to the internet well look at this USB that's a USB port I have a USB extension extension <laughs> extension right that's a 10 10 feet extension that goes all the way to as far as possible from your head and at the end of this extension I have what's called a USB Wi-Fi adapter so this adapter can be used on computers that have no Wi-Fi so what I do is I turn off the Wi-Fi on my computer and instead I use this Wi-Fi antenna but this Wi-Fi antenna is a good what is it 8 to 10 feet from my place from where I sit on my computer so when I'm away from home guys this is what I do I always use that USB uh, USB cable extension could be 10 20 30 50 feet 100 feet if you want maybe there's going to be some drop off drop off in, in the signal at one point but still you can use that and at the end of it you have that usb wi-fi adapter so at the computer you're maybe 10 feet from the source your computer itself doesn't emit that radiation but this little thingy does so we've tackled the office environment reduce exposure from the Wi-Fi we've tackled the bed and now we're gonna move to this bad boy the green wave broadband EMI meter and uh, the sounds gonna be ugly so I apologize in advance you can uh, reduce your sound or uh, the, reduce the volume because it doesn't sound pretty okay the first thing we're gonna do is plug this in shows about 300 millivolts what am I measuring with this I'm measuring a type of electricity called dirty electricity normally the electricity running in your walls should be 60 Hertz that's a frequency that's in North America in other parts of the world it might be 50 Hertz 
However, the reality is that this is not the electricity we're getting. The electricity gets dirtied by different machines and other frequencies ride in these walls, on the outlets, and on anything you plug inside the wall. So what we're measuring here is the needless frequencies that are on top of 60 hertz, right? So this is the dirty electricity I'm going to be referring to. We're measuring about 3 to 400 millivolt. Normally speaking, we want to be under 50. So what we can use to dampen the problem to kind of reduce dirty electricity, right? Uh, I can travel with these green wave filters. It's a very easy plug-in filter, three prong. You can have other models for Europe or Asia, and you uh, you have a, some of them have a second plug here, so you don't block the outlet completely. Uh, in other words, the the you plug into the filter in order to still have your two outlets available. So what I can do is just install a first green wave filter and I will install it in the bedroom because again, that's my top priority to be able to sleep at night. So I install a filter and then I'm gonna take the meter again and measure the outlet to see what the reduction was. So now we're at about 150 millivolts. So it's not where I'd like it to be. However, it is better. So we're getting there. And I will install a second uh, filter in the same room. So now I'm going to install one uh, underneath there. And maybe if I can, can I do this? Yeah, I can probably. Hold on a second. There you go. So now I've installed the second one by the bed stand or the nightstand, I guess. Uh, and then I'm going to take the broadband EMI meter again and take a measurement. You just plug it in. And the sound is a little bit dampened. So now we're at about 110. So ideally, maybe I would have brought three of them for a hotel room size. Uh, however, I did reduce from three to 400 to 100. So I'm still doing good. So I've, I've mitigated also this other aspect that is good. So I could also talk about artificial light. I could talk about magnetic fields and many other things. And these are all things we address in our course. So I hope you liked this special episode of Smart Attack where I showed you around the hotel room and how you can minimize your exposure in a hotel room as you're traveling from different types of EMFs. If you want to learn the whole story, we do have a course I co-authored, co-created with Brian Hoyer, a top EMF mitigation specialist, where we show you all types of EMFs, including artificial light, magnetic fields, and other things that I don't necessarily have time to go in depth uh, during these shorter videos and podcasts. So that's the whole story, the entire step-by-step -step program to minimize EMFs at home. We do talk about the right types of light bulbs, what's the right distance between certain things and your bed when it comes to magnetic fields, for example. So it can get technical, we make it very, very simple, and the course is still very affordable. So that's called Electro Pollution Fix, and you can go to electropollutionfix.com or just look at the show notes. I hope you liked it. Uh, this is very important to minimize your exposure. You're gonna sleep better, you're gonna feel more refreshed in the morning, and then you also cut down on your long-term risk associated with this technology, namely, cancer and other chronic diseases where you might see your risk go up if you're overexposed and all of us are to be quite honest so i'm nick pino i hope you liked this episode and i'm gonna see you next time